Oh, come on, there's nobody like the name of Jesus, no one like him. Oh, come on, there's no one like Jesus. We can give him a little praise tonight, it's okay. Jesus, there is no one like you. Jesus, there's no one that can break chains like you can. Jesus, there's no one that can save us like you can. So Jesus, we give you praise like you deserve. Come on, church. I think it's okay to give him a little shout tonight because he's worthy of all the praise. Yes. You know, I'm so glad that you made it out to church tonight. You know, I love that what we're singing today, Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus everywhere we go. You know, and that represents a lot maybe for you. Sometimes you're, you're on some high highs and sometimes you hit some low lows. But regardless of where you're at, Jesus is there and he's with you. You may be in a low low right now, but I got good news for you. Jesus sees you, he's with you, he's got a way out for you. And here's what the, the best part is. You're gonna come out of this better than how you got into it. Come on, give God some praise. The best is yet to come when you got Jesus. You know, before we move on, I wanna take a moment for us as a church just to pray for our pastor, Pastor Marco and Pastor Robert. Pastor Marco wanted me to let you all know he wanted to be here tonight and he was supposed to be preaching tonight, but he and, and the family took some time together to visit his father, him and Pastor Robert's father in Arizona. And th these may be his last days on earth. You know, he's suffering from very terminal sickness and he's not doing well. So the whole family got together just to be with him, to maybe give him just to maybe say their last words. And it's not an easy place to be. So can we just take a moment? We're gonna pray right now for the word, but we'll also just wanna lift up our pastor in prayer, if that's okay. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that right now you are comforting and you are with our pastor, Pastor Robert, Pastor Marco, the family, Lord, all the grandkids. We thank you, God, you're with them, you're comforting them, you're embracing them, God, you're strengthening them. Lord, this is not easy for anybody to go through, but we know, Lord, that with you, God, Lord, there's strength in the family. But most importantly, we thank you for Ray's life. We thank you, God, that he lived a life, Lord, to glorify you. He, Lord, lived a life to bring your name honor and glory, God. And we thank you, Lord, that he is saved and sanctified and Father, pretty soon you're gonna bring him home, God. And Lord, we thank you, God, that he is gonna be rejoicing in heaven with you, dancing on the streets of gold. And we give you praise for that. Bless tonight's word and open our hearts to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Give your neighbor a high five and just tell them I'm so happy to see you tonight. All right. Praise God. Well, tonight, the title of the message tonight is this, one thing you can't live without. One thing you can't live without. Now, if we did a survey right now and asked you, what's one thing you could not live without? Uh, we'd probably get some different answers. But a, a, a research poll actually happened in the country. You wanna know what the answers were? This is what people said. These are the top five things that people said they cannot live without. Number five came in at beauty products. Wow, some people said, wow. Beauty products, do we have a picture? Do we have that picture? There it is. Ladies, you know what, I'm, we know what that is? Some guys, I hope you don't know what that is. But well, maybe you see that all over your bathroom counters, like taking over. Not my wife, she's very clean and organized. She does not, I'm just kidding. Number five, beauty prog products. Can anyone say amen to that? Man, can't live without it. Well. Number four came in at a good mattress. A good mattress. Anyone enjoy just a good night's sleep? You're just like, oh, I can't wait to get home. Just lay down, ah, oh, feels so good. Look how happy she is. She slept so well. Number three came in at a washer and dryer. People said, I cannot live without a washer and dryer. 
where were we like 50 years ago, 60 years ago? <laughs> the tub, she said. <laughs> Hanging in the backyard. Some of us still hand wash. I don't know. Maybe you do. Praise the Lord. Washer dryer. Number two came in at a pet. A pet. Look how cute this little puppy is. If I had him, I couldn't live without him either. That's just the truth. Look how cute that little guy is. And tied for first place was this. You knew, you got guessed it, a phone and Wi-Fi. A phone and Wi-Fi. I, I've seen, I've, I've, you know, I hit the streets. I minister to people on the streets. And I'm telling you, there's one thing that they got. They got a phone. And they know where to get some Wi-Fi. I mean, we all know how to get some free Wi-Fi. We know where to post up. This is a survey that was taken. But we know the truth. There's one thing that we cannot live without. You could have the best mattress, you could have the best signal of your Wi-Fi, does not matter what you got in this world, you could have all the money in the world. But there's one thing we cannot live without, and that's the message of the good news of what Jesus did for you and me. Come on, give God some praise if you know you cannot live without the gospel. This good news message is the greatest message you will ever hear. It's a message you cannot live without, this good news, this gospel. So the purpose of tonight's message is to bring us back to the basics, bring us back to the fundamentals, bring us back to what matters most in our lives. See, there's nothing more important than receiving the good news, sharing the good news with somebody, and living it out in our lives. Jesus gave us the good news, and that's what we're gonna focus on tonight. Are you guys with me? So we're going verse by verse. We're picking up right where we left off. You know, we had some, uh, some portions of scripture in between, but we're picking up from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're gonna go verse by verse through verse one all the way to verse 11. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 15 verse one says this. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. Point number one I have for you tonight is this. Stand firm in the good news. So let's, let's define what that is then. What's the good news? What's the gospel? Well, it's good news because there's some really bad news for all of us here. All of us have sinned, and there's a price for sin. That's, that price is death, and we owe that price because we willingly sin. Have you lied? Anyone in here lied before? If you said no, you're a liar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we've lied, we've cheated, we've stolen, we've lusted, we've had hate in our heart, we had anger. There's all these sins we've done. Some of us have done the whole we broke nine laws today on the way to church. It's true, we've all sinned. The price for that is death, but that's bad news. The bad news gets worse. The bad news gets worse. It, it, it's, it's so bad that the sin is so heavy, the debt is so big that there's no amount of good you can do to pay for that. I can't do like 10, 12, 15 good deeds and make up for one bad sin. It doesn't work that way. So the bad news just keeps getting worse. And then, and then we start to see that in our lives, it just keeps getting worse. When we sin, it doesn't, it doesn't just end in pleasure, it ends in death and decay. So our families begin to be destroyed, our character is destroyed, our joy is gone, our, our, our confidence and our faith begins to diminish, our fire burns out, we begin to lose interest and, and satisfaction in the good things and that God has given us in life. All these things begin to happen because of sin. And it just gets worse and worse. It gets to a point where we, we, we all know we'll die one day, but the truth is that when we die, if we die carrying this debt on us, there's no other way to pay for it except to go to hell forever for all of eternity. And just when you think just when you think it doesn't get worse, it just keeps getting worse because eternity never ends. This is bad news. This is news that none of us want to hear. But the truth is, I wouldn't love you and someone would not love you if they didn't tell you the truth. 
If they put a, a blinder on their face and just ignore the direction you were walking in, then they do not love you. But we as a church, we love you. We love you so much, we're gonna tell you the truth. We're gonna tell you not just the bad news, but we're gonna tell you that there's some good news. God loves you, he made a way for you to be saved and forgiven, and he gave up his one and only son. And Jesus paid the price so that you can have eternal life. Someone say, that's good news. So Paul right here, he's talking to the church in Corinth, and he's letting everybody know, the good news, you received it gladly. They were really excited, they were eager. And he's telling them, stand firm in it. Don't let it go. Some of us, we, we're living our Christian walk and we get excited, we're on fire at first, we have just a drive within us and then slowly but surely we begin to lose faith or we just stop believing fully in our heart on, in the good news of what God said about you. You start to believe now in your circumstances more than you do your God. You start to believe more in the problems than you do the problem solver. You start to believe more in the lies of what the enemy says about you. You're no good, you'll never be free, you'll always be addicted, you'll always, be, you'll always, you'll always deal with this, you'll never be good. You believe those lies more than you believe the truth. So this is why Paul had to tell the church, you have to stand firm in believing the good news that you receive so gladly. See, it's, good, it's great to receive it, but it's another thing to stand firm in it. How many, how many um, this is a crazy question to ask in October, but how many people here remember what your New Year's resolutions were? <laughs> I've seen one hand, two. Don't lie to me. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I don't even remember all of my New Year's resolutions. And there's a lot of things we said, man, this year, oh man, I'm gonna do this. And we started the year off strong. And we were super excited. I'm gonna hit the gym every morning at 5 a.m. Any, anybody ever said that? Why are you laughing? Because you know I don't be hitting no gym at 5 a.m. Whoa, whoa, you don't gotta laugh that hard. <laughs> Or we say things like, man, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read, I'm going to read a book every month. I'm going to read one book a month. And you're, you're still 10 pages in the first book. You haven't even picked it back up. It's still, come on, let's just tell the truth. Why am I saying these things? Because the truth is we start a lot of things, but the question is, can you finish them? Do you have the endurance to get through a tough time and to finish what you started? See, that this is a difference between people that grow in their walk, people that succeed in life, people that grow even in their leadership, people that, that, that complete uh, uh, and, and finish things. The difference is not that they have the, the best uh, hand of cards dealt to them or they got better luck, luck than somebody else, no. The difference is that everyone goes through trials but one, one person gave up in the middle of the storm and the other person decided to keep going. One person stopped believing what God said, that there's promises for you, there's goodness on the other side, and the other person believed firmly that if God said it, it will happen. I wonder what promises God told you that you, you have kind of tucked away somewhere and you stopped believing in. I'm here to let you know that those promises are not dead promises. God will never, his word will never return to him void. You can pick those things up and you can stand firmly on the promises that God has given you. You can trust in his word. Someone say stand firm. So this is why Paul has to say, let me remind you. He says, let's get back to the basics. Let's go back to the promise. Let's go back to this message about the good news. Where did all that fire go? You might know what I'm talking about. You were once so on fire for God and now it just feels like a chore. You had such a passion and a drive for God and all the things he had for you. And now you're just going through the motions. Where did the fire go? Well, let me remind you. Remember that fire you once had? Remember the first love? Remember the zeal? Remember the passion? 
What God wants you to remember here today is that God did not lose interest in you, so don't lose interest in the Lord. God did not give up on you, so don't give up on him. God's promises will not fail you. They will come to pass. Trust in him. You can trust in his promises. You can trust in his word. So we got to hear the good news. We got to receive the good news. See, tonight might be some of the first time that you hear some good news in a long time. And you're all hearing today, you're hearing right now uh, as you're watching this sermon. You may be hearing this, but, but the question is, the next step is, will you receive the good news? See, none of us can actually, you, you can't be prayed into heaven. None of you can work your way into heaven. I know you got a praying mama and she loves you and she prays for you every day, but her prayers cannot pray you into heaven. Your grandma, she cannot pray you into heaven. Your pastor cannot pray you into heaven. The moment you hear the good news, you now have a choice to make. Will you receive it or, or will you reject it? There's no in between, there's no middle ground, it's one or the other. See, God will always lead you to his truth he will lead you with love, he will tug on your spirit, and he will draw you to himself, but he will never force you to receive it. Receiving is up to you. And after you hear it and after you receive it, you have a choice to make. Am I gonna stand firm in this? See, we gotta continually stand firm in the message that we receive. It says in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, it says, remain alert. Keep standing firm in your faith. Keep on being courageous and strong. See, those are words, those are like fighting terms right there. Standing firm, keep on being courageous, keep on being strong. These, these are words for people that are in the middle of a fight. See, you don't tell somebody that's not in the middle of a fight to stand firm, be courageous and be strong. See, those are words for somebody that's in the middle of the test of your life and you're in the middle of the storm of your life and your faith is being tested and your life is being rocked right now. And God is saying, I got good news for you. You can stand firm, you could be courageous, but I need you to make this choice to stand firm in the good news I've given you. Do not give up in the promises I've given you. Someone say, stand firm. stand firm. See, right now is not the season to quit or to give up. And I'm telling you right now that in the middle of your storm, you may think that it's gonna be that way forever, but after every storm, the clouds will part, the sun will shine again, and the glory of the Lord will shine in your life, and you can trust and believe that he has good things planned for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody in here that believes it tonight? Will you stand firm in it tonight? Stand on those promises, church. Stand on the message he gave you. Don't give up on him. See, some of you guys thought tonight would be your last night in church. And all of a sudden, God has this message for you. Some of you were looking at the exit door. You've been peeking at the exit door in your walk with God. You've been peeking at the exit door and coming to church consistently. And this is a message for you. And God is saying, do not quit because breakthrough is on the other side. Stand firm. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. I got good news for you. The best is yet to come. But just keep standing. See, it's the good news that saves you. It says here in verse two, I'm still in 1 Corinthians, so you're gonna have to keep your finger or put a marker. We're gonna keep going back to 1 Corinthians 15. We're going verse by verse through it. Verse two says, verse two says, it is this good news that saves you. If, someone say if. If you continue to believe the message I told you. The good news saves you if you continue to believe. You know, there's time, there's people that will stop believing and they'll reject their faith. They'll reject who Jesus is. But if you continue to believe, if you continue to trust in the good news, not trust in your own good works, not trust in how good you can be, not trust in the prayers of your loved one, not trust in anything else except what Jesus did for you. 
If you continue to believe in that and you don't stop believing, you will be saved. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, so do not, believe, do not stop believing God now. Your faith will bring you much reward. You must not give up believing. Then you will do what God wants you to do. Then you will get what he promised you. What a scripture. See, this verse is for someone here in this room who you just need, you, you just have, you're hanging on a thread of faith right now, but you know that that's all God needs to work within you. See, God is saying, I don't need a crazy amount of faith. I just need faith the size of a mustard seed. And watch what I can do with just a faith the size of a mustard seed. That little faith can move a mountain. That little faith can split the Red Sea. That little faith can kill the enemy. That little faith can take care of your Goliath. Just trust me with what you got. Don't stop believing and the reward it's coming your way. God is going to reward those who continue to believe. So that's point number one, stand firm in the good news. Point number two is this, share the good news. Someone say, share the good news. Verse three starts with this, says, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. So Paul's now passing on, Paul received the good news, and now he's passing it on to somebody else. Have you ever heard about something, a deal that was so good you just, you couldn't keep it a secret? Bro, you need to get to Walmart right now, I'm telling you, TVs are like 50% off. Uh, for real? Yeah, I just got like a 65 inch for like 400 bucks. For real? Yeah, bro. Hitting everybody up, posting it on Facebook. You're just trying to be like everybody's hero. You're going out there, use, use my coupon code. No, I'm just kidding. You hear good news, you hear something so good, you just want to pass it on. I wonder why we don't pass on the best news you've ever heard. That Jesus died for your sins and that Jesus can set you free from your addiction and that Jesus has life for you and that Jesus loves you. All right, I'll keep going. See, the most important thing you can pass on to others is this good news. If you love someone, you'll share it with them. My, um, I was just talking to my nephew last night. My nephew, his name is Raul, I call him Junior. And he was just telling me, we were just chatting, and he was saying, you know, he's saying, Chris, Chris, he calls me Chris. Chris, I've been sharing the gospel like crazy at work lately. I'm like, what? I didn't react like that. I was just like, oh, good, good. But in my heart, I was like, really? He's like, I've been sharing the gospel like crazy at work. And man, I'm, I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to people that think Christians hate them. I'm talking to people that think that, 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 think that God isn't real. And, and I'm, I'm telling them things. And here's what's so cool. The way he's talking to them, it's so matter of fact. He's not trying to debate anybody. And, and this is the responses they're telling him. They're saying, wow, I, I never heard it that way. Or I, I understand now. I, I get it. And they're starting, their eyes are starting to open, their heart is starting to open. And, and, and little by little, he's planting those seeds or he's watering those seeds. But the reason why they're telling him things like that, like I've never heard it that way. It, it makes so much sense. I get it. It's not because he's a great debater. It's not because he, he has a, a, a seminary degree from the, the most, the craziest theology school. It's because he loves them. And a message that's covered in love, I'm telling you, will speak so much better than the best sermon you could ever give them. There's people in your life that you love dearly. And if you just tell them this good news in love, they're gonna get the message that you love them, that you care about them. And this is why you're telling them this good news. This is for your coworkers, this is for your friends, this is for your classmates, this is for your roommates, this is for your family, come on somebody. The people need to hear this good news and you got it. Share it with somebody and share it in love. more than skills or more than your last name, the greatest thing you can offer your family, that you can offer your kids, is this good news. 
There's nothing better. That's why Paul said, the mo- I pass on to you what was most important. You know, I wanna, um, there's a guy, anyone ever heard of Cornelius Vanderbilt? Cornelius, Cornel- Jenny can't even say his name. Cornelius Vanderbilt. He was one of the, mal- oh, the mouthiest, not the mouthiest, the wealthiest. He's one of the wealthiest men in American his- history. And he made his fortune through shipping and railroads during the 19th century. When he passed away in 1877, he left a staggering $100 million. It may not sound like a lot today because inflation be going crazy. But that today is the equivalent of $2.4 billion. He died and left $2.4 billion with a B. Just imagine getting that. One day the government knocks on your door and is like, yeah, you had a rich uncle. Have you ever prayed that you had a rich uncle that you just didn't know about? (laughs) Hey, let's keep going. He left $2.4 billion to his family, mostly to his son, William. The inheritance helped establish the Vanderbilt family as one of the most prominent in America. Talk about an inheritance. Talk about passing on something of value. $2.4 billion, that's valuable. However, We know it's not as valuable as the good news. It's not as good because the good news, this message, it lasts forever. But 2.4 billion, it could go like that. And here's what happened. It says, however, despite the massive fortune, later generations struggled to maintain their wealth. And the story of the Vanderbilts serves as a cautionary tale about the complexities of managing large inheritances. Many of them squandered it, many of them lost it, and it was gone forever. See, not even $2.4 billion is as valuable as passing on the good news that Jesus loves you, he can set you free, he has eternity waiting for you, and he can give you eternal life and forgiveness of your sin. There's nothing that's more valuable than that. It goes to show that No matter what we leave behind, the best thing we can leave behind is this good news. When you receive it for yourself, don't just carry it for yourself, but pass it on to somebody. Give give it to somebody. So uh, there's another story I wanna share with you. There's this kid named Ryan, little six-year-old boy. We got the picture of Ryan, this is Ryan. Ryan, he was a little kid in Canada, he was in school one day, and his his teachers told him about there's, there's other kids in Kenya that do not have access to clean water. They'd be getting sick. Some of them pass away. And so when he heard that, this is what he said. All I had to do was take 10 steps from my classroom to, get drinking, uh, to go to the drinking fountain and to get clean water. And he thought, I have clean water. I can go get it right now. He thought everybody else was like him. And when he found out that no one, there was other people, in, kids in Kenya that did not have access to clean water, he decided to do something about it. So he worked extra chores to earn some money. He earned $70, but he found out it would be thousands to build a well. So he started asking people and the word got out and eventually he was able to build a drinking a clean water well in Kenya as a six year old boy. It didn't stop there. Eventually word got out. He was not only able to build one well, but today he's been able to provide clean water to over a million people in in 16 developing countries all over the world. Why? Because, and we can show those other pictures, because he shared what he had. He had access to something. It was accessible to him and he shared it. And all of you today, we all have access to Jesus. We all have access to this good news. And you have heard it tonight. And all it takes for you is to muster up some courage and share it with somebody else. And who knows, you can save their life just by sharing one message with them. This is the one thing that they cannot live without. Why are we holding it to ourselves? And I'll go to my last point. Not only should we, number one was stand firm in the good news. Not only should we share the good news, but number three is live by the good news. Live by the good news. Picking up in 1 Corinthians 15, 
from verse nine. It says, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. Anybody had to have a past that you're not proud of? That's what Paul is talking about here. He's saying, I used to live a certain way. I'm not proud of the way I lived. I'm not worthy to be called God's child because of my past. I've done things I'm not proud of. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. He says, but whatever I am now, it's all because God poured out his special favor on me. Everything I am today, I owe that to God. I will not, I could not be where I am. I could not be standing in front of you right now. I couldn't be holding this microphone if it had not been for God pouring out his grace upon my life. You know what grace is? It's something you don't deserve. It's a good thing. It's favor you don't deserve. See, my sin is like, I, I, it's like, my sin is so evil, it's so corrupt and wicked that it's like I spit on the face of God. That's what we do when we sin. It's like we reject God and it's like we're nailing Jesus on the cross again. But regardless of all of that, God has grace for you. It's something we don't deserve, but he has it for you. That's such good news, church. Come on. I know there's someone here that's thankful that God could set you free from your past life, from your addiction, from the way you used to live, from the, from the corruption. Come on. Is there anybody thankful that Jesus set you free? I'm thankful for a new life. I'm thankful for a new mind. I'm thankful for a new heart. I'm thankful to be free, to be made whole, to be delivered, to be fearless, to be strong, to be filled with faith. And it's all a result of God pouring his grace out upon you and me. I didn't accomplish this. It was all the hand of God. He says, whatever I am now, it's all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. See, grace will save you. Not only save you, but grace can change you. Grace can give you a new set of, of eyes to see, a new heart, a new mind. Come on, somebody needs a new mindset. God can give you a new mind. God can give you, God can replace your depression with some joy. God can replace your anxiety with some peace. Is there anybody that wants something new from God tonight? God can do that. There's this saying, and, and I just kind of wrote this down. I said this, I am not self-made, I'm gospel-made. Some people try to brag about being self-made this. I'm a self-made that. I'm an independent this. I don't claim none of that. I'm not self-made, I'm gospel-made. I'm not independent, I'm dependent upon the gospel. I'm dependent upon his grace. I cannot do this on my own, trust me, believe me. I don't claim that for me, I need Jesus. Is there anybody in here who knows they need Jesus? I need him. I need him more just as much now as day one when I got saved. I need him just as much now as the day I gave up the drugs or the day I gave up the lifestyle or the day I gave up the relationships. I need him just as much now. Come on, is there anybody with me who's saying I need Jesus? I need him. Last verse here. Man, I'm gonna get you out early tonight. Somebody said glory. <laughs> Verse 11, worst team could come out. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. We've all preached the same message you have already believed. What's the message he's preaching? Scroll back with me to verse three. I know I said last verse, I got you. I'm just kidding. This is the message, I'll just read through it. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the 12. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. During that time, they were still alive. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. This is the good news. The good news is this, that Jesus came to earth to live as a man, to represent you and me. He left heaven to represent us and to live on this earth. 
Jesus also died for our sins, not because he was sinful, but he did it to stand in our place and to receive the wrath of God's judgment on our behalf. We should have been the ones to receive God's wrath. And some of us, if you don't receive Jesus, the sacrifice that Jesus made for you, then the wrath of God is still on you. But Jesus came and died for our sins so he could receive the wrath of God on the cross. Jesus was also buried. He not only died on the cross, but he carried the sin of the world with him on the cross and he buried it. The Bible says that Jesus became sin for you and me. And when he died and he was buried, he buried sin with it. This was him putting to death the sin of the world, past, present, and future, all of our sin. Jesus was then raised to life on the third day. This is one of the most important moments in the history of time. No, I'm, I'm sorry, let me rephrase. This is the most important moment in the history of time. Jesus was raised to life, ultimately defeating sin and death once and for all. This means that anybody who believes in him, you can have eternal life. You can get a new beginning. You can be set free from death and sin and no longer live under the penalty or the power of your past life or your sin. This is good news. He raised to life to represent us. He was the first to be raised so that we can follow him and be raised to new life again. This is why some you see that get baptized, they go under the water. Just like Jesus died, they're buried under the water like a, a representation that they're dying to the old them and then they're raised to life again and receiving a wholeness and a freedom and salvation that they couldn't purchase themselves. Jesus then met with his disciples. Why, why did he do that? He did that to pass on the good news that he was risen. And then he commissioned them to share the good news with everyone and make disciples. And then lastly, Jesus ascended to heaven so that he can give us his spirit. And he did all of this because he loves you. This was his rescue mission so that you can be saved. Bow your heads with me. Question for you. You've heard the good news tonight. The question is, will you receive the good news? The good news that God loves you. He has a plan for you. He has a new beginning for you. Are you ready to receive that? You heard me tell you about the bad news that if we die in our sins, we inherit death here and then we inherit death after we pass on from this earth. We spend eternity in hell because of our rejection of the good news. But I'm so glad you're still with us today. You're still alive. God gave you some more time just by his grace so that you can be saved, so that he can pour out his love on you. So the question is this, are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to receive this good news message? Are you ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you are, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand all over this room. One, two, three. Raise your hand all over this room. You're saying, I want to receive it. God bless you. I see you. One, two. Keep your hand up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Anybody else? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Anybody else? 20, 21, 22, 23. Anybody else? 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Anybody else? 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Come on, give God some praise. 48 people making that decision tonight. Altar team, I want you to come up. Stay standing, every, um, stay sitting, stay sitting. Uh, standing, sitting, sorry. Those 48 people that raised your hand, can you do me one more favor? Could you stand up to your feet right now? Just right at your seat. Just stand up on your feet wherever you're at. 48 people that raise your hand. You want to receive Jesus right now. This is not to shame you. This is so we can applaud you and give you a standing ovation. Come on, let's all stand with them right now. Let's give them a standing ovation that they're making a decision to follow Jesus and receive this good news.
One more thing I'll ask before anybody leaves. I'm getting you out early, so there's no rush. 48 people, 48 of you, do me one more favor. Would you make your way out of your seat? Would you come up here to the front and just, and we have a prayer team up here that wants to pray with you and congratulate you. We're not gonna ask you to come up on stage or nothing, but just come up right here to the front and they're gonna pray with you. Come on, if you raise your hand, come up to the front right now. And church, let's clap for them like this is your brother, your mother, your son, your daughter. Come on, this is somebody, this is someone's daughter, this is someone's son. They've been praying for them and they're finally making the decision tonight to give their life to Jesus. Let's give God some praise. Yes! Break every Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hey, I'm so proud of you, bro. I'm so proud of you. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so proud of each of you to making this decision. This is a powerful, this is a beautiful day. We have some, a few more ladies up here if we can get some help. Come on, they're still coming. Let's clap for them. They're still coming up. For those that came up, I want to let you know that we're going to walk with you. And we have a class for you. It's called Starting at the Way. And in this class, we're going to show you how to get baptized. We're going to show you how to walk with God. We're going to give you a, a, a short little devotional book and teach you how to read the Bible and to pray. But that's your next step. Get baptized. Sign up for this class called Starting at the Way. And the person in front of you, they're going to pray with you and they're going to help you get signed up. Okay? Are we ready? Let's do that. I actually want to make one more call. And this, this is the call I want to make. I mentioned people in this room that you feel like at one point you were on fire for God, but lately you've been feeling like your fire is just going through the motions and, and it's dying inside. Like, like, like serving God has been, it's been, your fire has been going out. Let's just put it that way. You've been feeling that way. And, you're, and, and I want those that are saying, I want my fire back. I want my fire back. I want to be as passionate as day one. I want to remember the good news I received and stand on God's promises. I've been losing faith, but I haven't lost all my faith, but I need my fire back. I want you to leave your seat and come up to the front right now as a sign of faith to say, I am getting my fire back. I'm not letting my fire die. I am going all in for Jesus. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just serve God with everything. Come on, I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you. Come on, they're still coming up. They're still coming up. Get your fire back. Look at someone next to you and say, get your fire back. Maybe they need to be up here. It's okay. It's time tonight to get your fire for God back again and never let it burn out ever again. Praise God. I'm first gonna pray for you guys. I, I'm gonna pray for those that need their fire back and then we'll pray corporately and we'll dismiss. Actually, yeah, let's do it that way. Everybody lift your hands right now. We're gonna lift our hands to heaven as a sign of surrender. All that means is God, I surrender to you. I give it all up to you. And we're just gonna right now just declare that that fire will never burn out again. This is your moment right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every one of your children tonight whose fire has been dying inside. We thank you, Lord, that this right now was a rescue message. Many, Father, the enemy had plans for them, but we thank you that your plans for your daughter, your plans for your son are greater, and your plans have never, ever failed, and they have, they have not been retracted, and God, we thank you that you have mighty plans for them. So, Father, right now, we ask that you would burn within us again a fire that would set ablaze. God, right now, we repent of our sin. We repent, Father, for being apathetic. We repent for being lazy in our faith. And God, we say, burn within us a fire in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, right now we pray that you begin to release a fire in the name of Jesus, a fresh fire and a fresh wind in Jesus' name. God, we thank you, Lord, that your sons and your daughters, Father, Father, will never burn out again, God, that they will be so on fire for you, Lord. They will, be, they will serve you passionately, God. We thank you, Lord, that you will preserve their life, God. We thank you, Lord, that you will burn within them. Holy Spirit, fill them now in the name of Jesus. 
We rebuke and we bind every spirit that will try to hinder their walk. Every spirit that tries to keep them in a cycle of going back. We rebuke those things now in Jesus' name and we declare a fire that will burn for you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Come on, receive it right now. Receive it from the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Tonight, tonight, never going back. I want everybody to repeat after me. Say, God, thank you that you've rescued me. When I was lost, you found me. I couldn't find my own way, but you rescued me from my sin, from bondage, from, from uh, 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 demonic attacks. Set me free, deliver me. I put my faith in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. I, I put my faith in you. I believe in the gospel, the good news that you saved me from this moment forward. I'll never be the same. Fill me with your spirit and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. And we all say, Hey, come on church, let's give God some praise right now if you know He is a good, good Father. We love you so much. Sunday, Vlad Savchuk will be here. You're going to want to get here a little early, invite somebody. It's going to be a powerful Sunday. We love you so much. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. If you need prayer, hang tight, hang up here. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.